We're now joined by Sarah Huddleston. She is a news editor at the Columbia Daily Spectator, the student's uh, newspaper at that university, and she joins us this morning in New York. Good morning to you, Sarah. Thanks for talking to us this morning. And you have an interesting perspective because you've been at the center of these protests, not only as a student, but also as a reporter covering them. So what has that experience been like for you? It's certainly been interesting as we've seen an escalation over this past week. However, our team has been really closely covering protests and protest activity on campus since um, October 7th last semester as well, um, which has allowed us to develop, you know, pretty good sourcing relationships and pretty good knowledge of um, what exactly protesters are demanding, what exactly it will take um, for them to uh, reach any sort of agreement with the university on this. Um, so we've been able to see that progression over time and allows us to get, of course, a closer look at what's happening on campus now. Um, campus is currently restricted to just Columbia affiliates, so you need a CEO ID in order to swipe in. Um, press and credentialed press are only allowed onto campus for a two-hour window every day. Um, so obviously being a student gives us better campus access. Um, than maybe some other outlets simply because we can come and go as we please. Right, yeah, you've got a different type of bird's eye view on exactly what things are, uh, well, how things are progressing there. Let's talk more about that progression that you described because you've been covering it since October. It has definitely uh, become more tense. We've heard about the more than 100 arrests there at Columbia. And there's also those encampments. Can you describe what the atmosphere is with those uh, in the tents right now? Mm -hmm. I would say that majority of the time it's quite a peaceful encampment um every morning they give a, a kind of a news update about what's happening in gaza um there's some singing some chanting um a lot of times they'll invite teach-ins um so like speakers to come um and speak on personal experiences um but there's also been a lot of congressional activity around columbia's campus and so representative ilhan omar visited campus representative um um, AOC visited campus to speak um, colloquially about that. Um, so there's been a lot of like a, a kind of a national buzz around what's happening at Columbia, which has invited some, of course, high profile speakers. Um, House Speaker Mike Johnson gave a press conference on um, low steps, which is our main, the steps outside of our main administrative building following a meeting with our university president, Manu Shafiq. Um, so typically, um, more most regularly throughout the day, um, it's a pretty peaceful encampment, um, just kind of groups of friends on a lawn. Um, but then, of course, given the the intense amount of national scrutiny on Columbia at the moment, um, it certainly invites uh, the, these higher profile people mm -hmm. um, to come onto campus, generating more buzz, et cetera. Sarah, you've used the word peaceful a, a little bit uh, in your answer there. Um, Looking at some of the images, though, also keeping in mind the arrests that have happened there. We've talked about the Columbia student who was banned uh, after saying, quote, Zionists don't deserve to live. Those comments made in January. Uh, the classes have moved online. Many Jewish students are fearful for their safety. What do you make of that, even um, with you saying that things are quite peaceful there? Mm -hmm. I think maybe two answers here. Um, first, with the point about the classes, um, our classes are now offered in a hybrid format, which means that they are offered primarily in person, but professors will supply a remote option for students who don't feel comfortable coming to campus or cannot come to campus for other extenuating circumstances as well. Um, our last day of classes is actually this Monday, so that hybrid option was only in place for about a week um, as we nail near the tail end of our semester. Um, and then something else to keep in mind about the word peaceful, I think our university president has um, differentiated between protests that are happening currently on campus, so in the encampment on campus, and then protests that have been continuing to occur um, around and outside of campus. So, of course, access is restricted to Columbia ID holders, but a lot of community members or people within New York City more broadly um, have been participating in pretty large scale protests that occur typically right outside of Columbia's gates. So of course that th that border is a little bit strained. It's not that protester, outside protesters or non-affiliate protesters are just blocks away. I mean, they're right outside of campus as well. So when you're coming and going, you, you're interacting with protesters as well. Um, yeah. But our university president from um, and from our reporting as well, a lot of these sites of anti-Semitic incidents have been occurring 
um, as a result of these outside protests, not to say that there haven't been anti-Semitic incidents occurring on campus, either in recent days or since October 7th. Um, but, you know, based off of what we're seeing um, and what we've been reporting, and of course the messaging that's coming from um, the office of the president at this time, a lot of those, um, again, uh, sites of conflict or, again, sites of anti-Semitism are mainly just occurring in these um, non-affiliated, like, autonomous protests. Yeah, and that's something that we even heard with the president's comments, uh, saying that tensions have been exploited and amplified by people unaffiliated with the university, to your point. Sarah, I want to thank you so much for your time and for sharing your experience with us, not only as a reporter there at Columbia, but also as a student as well. That's Sarah Huddleston in New York this morning.